by the time we are 35 years old, 95% of who we are, which is comprised of what we believe, how we think, how we feel, and what we do is already formed and it's stored in the subconscious mind. So why is that important? We have to make a conscious choice to let the dog in. One moment. Come on, Mama. We have to become conscious that we're unconscious in order to make any type of changes at all. Most of us are on autopilot most of the time. So 90 to 95% of what we think on a daily basis is exactly what we thought the day before. Why is that? It's because we want to be safe and our subconscious mind has found these patterns that it creates in our brains to keep us stuck, essentially, to keep us doing the same thing over and over and over again. So what I teach my clients, I'm a coach, is to actually become very aware of what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're believing about themselves, and then what actions come out of that. I'm Karen Seltz. I am also the uncensored self-love coach. Last month, I was doing a walking meditation on the beach in Cancun, Mexico. And I experienced something I've never experienced before. And it was a state of complete bliss, self-love, oneness, and wholeness. And it was something that I never dreamed was even possible. But let me tell you, it was not always like that for me. Six years ago, I was depressed. I was hopeless. I was addicted. And I was suicidal. And I got to the point of myself in my bathroom mirror. And I started yelling at myself. I don't even recognize you. Who are you? You were meant for more. Stop wasting your life. And it was at that moment that I decided to get help for my addiction and to become someone else. And it turns out that that someone else that I thought I was becoming was really the authentic me that I'd been running from my entire life out of fear that she wasn't good enough, that she would never be perfect and would therefore never be accepted. And once I came to terms with that, things started to shift for me. In the last five and a half years, I've been completely sober from my addiction. I've healed my depression. I no longer take antidepressants. I was able to quit my corporate sales shop and start my own coaching business. And in my opinion, I've become a much better mother, friend, and overall human being. But most importantly, I've come to actually love myself, like all of me, even those parts that I thought were so ugly and unlovable. Now, you may be asking yourself at this point, Karen, why are you telling me this? What does this have to do with connecting, inspiring, and influencing? Well, it all starts with authenticity. It starts with knowing yourself and being willing to share those tough moments in order to make a connection with somebody else. Because trust me, I tried for years to pretend like I was perfect and nobody was buying it and nobody felt connected to me. So the best way that I've found to really, really establish a deep connection with people is to be authentic. Okay, which will help you in interviews, networking events, social situations, or speaking. We're going to talk about using your story to inspire others in a way that highlights your accomplishments or your great things without being a story to influence others. Do something. Take action. We're going to do an exercise on changing your thoughts and emotions. And I'm going to share with you how to make sustainable changes in your life. Barbara Streisand said, stay true to yourself. People respond to authenticity. So in order to establish a connection to others, the first thing that I would love for you to consider is to get 
clear on your unconscious beliefs. Because remember when I said that I thought I was acting a certain way and that people were perceiving me that way in the beginning? Well, it's not true. Like people have built in lie detectors. We can spot bullshit a mile away, right? We know when people are not being authentic. So it's really important to start journaling or talk it out if you want to record it on your telephone. Start figuring out, okay, what am I believing about myself? And then question it. Like, is that really true? Because in order to, to like flesh it out, you have to start like digging in there and questioning it. Because I believed that it was a fact. I believed everything that I thought was true. The next thing that I would like you to do is to list three difficult events that have kind of shaped who you've come to be and who you're being in the world. For example, are you really cautious or do you take risks? Do you believe in yourself? Do you think positively? Do you think negatively? Those are all, all those beliefs in there are generally connected to types of events that we've experienced over the course of our lives, right? So when we break those down, we can actually look at them objectively. Like from the outside, you can say, okay, what have these events taught me? And who am I today because I went through that? I believe that those tough things are the juiciness that make us into people of character, people that are interesting. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, like, oh, I... You know, I had a boring life. Like, nobody wants to hear about that. Nobody cares, right? So be willing to look at that stuff, even though it's painful sometimes. And look for the juicy nuggets. Like, what's the beauty of it? You know, what did I learn? Who did I become in the process of overcoming that? And then you look for the juicy nuggets. Okay, what are the bits of wisdom that I acquired from that that I can incorporate into a story or that I can apply to my current goals or aspirations. Like remember that time when I didn't think I could pass this test in accounting because I was really bad at it and I studied and I got help and I found someone to teach it to me in a different way and I got a C plus. That's really true about me. I was very excited for that C plus. So you look at like, what are the nuggets and how do you use that in a story to inspire other people? The last part of establishing a connection in this section is what stories can you tell that highlight like your wisdom that you acquired? And wisdom is really important that you realize the definition I'm gonna use here is wisdom is experience that you've acquired that doesn't have an emotional or mental or physiological charge anymore. So if you think about a story, you know, something you went through, and every time you think about it, your body contracts and, and you tear up and you can't really get through it without having some type of breakdown. That's not a story you wanna choose. You wanna choose ones that you're, you've already gotten the lesson from. Yeah, does that make sense? How's everybody doing? Can you type in the chat, let me know? Okay, so one of the types of stories, let me know, you can just interrupt me when people write things because I can't see it. One of the types we're of- We're loving it. Go ahead. We're loving it, so far so good. Doing great. Tons of great responses so far, Karen, appreciate it. Cool, all right. So one of the types of stories is called the hero's journey. You're gonna recognize all of these components because I used it in the beginning. So in the hero's journey, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the end of it. Like what's your big accomplishment? Who are you being right now? Who have you become because of this adversity that you went through or something that you overcame? What I said was I was doing a walking meditation on the beach in Cancun and I felt this sense of self-love like I'd never experienced before. I felt whole. I felt my oneness. But the next part is the problem. 
but it wasn't always like this. And here's what I used to be like. And I talked about that I was addicted, depressed, suicidal, hopeless. So the second part is the problem. Here's what I used to be like, or here's what I overcame. This is a gold nugget, so write this down. <laughs> In the problem, you want to insert what's called a deep connection statement. Now, a deep connection statement is usually it's like an internal conversation you have in your head. Like, I remember thinking to myself, what I said in mind was, I remember screaming at myself in the mirror. And then what follows is in the present tense. The entire rest of the story is in the past tense. This deep connection statement is in the present tense. So what I said was, I remember screaming at myself in the mirror. Who are you? I don't even recognize you. You were meant for more. And then there was something else that I don't remember. Get off your butt, do something, right? So then the third part is the solution. Here's what I did. And if you want to install a teaching moment, you can do three points. First, I did this. So what I did was I made a decision. First, I made a decision to stop the addictive behavior or to get help for my addiction and to be someone else. And then you could do three points if you'd like, depending on how much time you have. And then the fourth thing is basically the result. So as a result of all this stuff, here's what I accomplished. Here's who I became. This is who I am now. And what I said was, I now see possibilities. I've been able to heal my addiction, my depression, to quit my corporate job, to become a better mother and person and human, and to actually start loving myself. So who has the four parts? You start at the end for the hero's journey, like with your big win or your big accomplishment, the problem, but it wasn't always like this, and that includes your deep connection statement that is in the present tense. And the third part was the solution. So here's what I did. And the fourth part is, as a result, here's what I accomplished. Hmm? Everybody good? Uh, it's so difficult without a live audience to like not see people's faces, even on Zoom. Thumbs up over here, Karen. We're doing good. The story you can use is called a PSR, Problem, Solution, Result. And it was all the same elements that we had in the hero's journey, but you're not starting at the end. You're going to start with the problem. And you could use this story when you're talking about yourself, a client, your child, anybody that you want to use as an example. For me, I'm a coach. <clears throat> if I want to use a client for an example, I could say when Sally came to me, she was struggling with low self-esteem and she was eating all the time to hide her feelings, to, to numb out. Solution. Oh wait, back in the problem, deep connection statement. I remember her saying to me, Karen, I am so disgusted with myself. Every time I eat something unhealthy that I know I shouldn't eat, I have these feelings of hatred for myself. Solution. So here's what she did, or here's what I had her do, and then take her through like the three core elements of my program. First, I had her do this. Second, I had her do this. Third, I had her. As a result, Sally now can look in the mirror and really like what she sees, both on the inside and the outside. She has more confidence. She started dating. She's in a relationship. She got a promotion at work, whatever it is, all the things, right? So that's a really good framework to use for someone else when you're talking about a client or if you're a teacher or something like that. I really wish you could see this next part because it's beautiful. Anyways, I'm just going to talk about it. Every thought that we think, every feeling that we feel all has a certain vibration, a certain frequency. We are made up of atoms and water 
as human beings that are constantly moving. And that movement is a vibration. And every time we think a thought that's negative, it has a very low vibration or a low frequency. And when we think a positive thought, it has a high vibration or high frequency. When we think high vibration or positive thoughts, our energy field actually expands and it's measurable. When we think negative thoughts, it, it contracts, it gets very, very tiny. And think about this. Have you ever had one of those days where every single thing that could go wrong goes wrong? Like for example, your alarm clock doesn't go off. You lost your keys. There's more traffic than normal on the way to work. So you're late. Your boss calls you in and rips you a new one, tells you how poorly you're doing on the job. Your best friend gets mad at you. Your dog eats your favorite shoes. It, you know, it just goes on and on. Think about like how you feel at the end of a day like that. And just type some things in the chat for me. Like, how would you feel if you had a day like that? I know I feel stressed and uneasy while we're just waiting for some people to yeah. type in the chat. Thank you. Right. How's your energy level at the end of a day like that? So depleted. Yeah. Yeah, it's exhausting, right? It's so yeah. Whereas if you think about the converse, what happens if you just wake up on the right side of the bed, everything's sunshine and roses, everything goes your way. You're like, what is going on? This is amazing. How do you feel at the end of that day? Usually very energized, very upbeat, positive. I mean, there's a palpable difference. You can feel it. But at the very bottom of these frequency charts are guilt and shame. And those vibrate or have a frequency of about 20 to 30 megahertz. At the top, you have unconditional love, joy, peace. And those vibrate at 500 to 600 megahertz. I didn't do the math, but it's like, I don't know, 30, 40 times higher, right? It's a big, big difference. And if you think about energy knows no bounds. That's why... If you get on the phone with your mother-in-law or something, you can just feel that energy, right? It doesn't matter where she lives. She could live in China. It, you can feel it. If you get on a Zoom call, even if someone has a happy face, you can feel their energy. And they can feel yours. So now is the time that we get to do this fun exercise. Hopefully, everybody got the handout. If you didn't get it... Uh, just write this down. We're just going to talk about it. All right. So this is basically a six-step process of how to up-level your thoughts and emotions to create a brighter future. When we think certain thoughts, I was talking about the frequency, the vibration, they're going to send out a signal to the universe. It's like a radio frequency that says, you know, this is where I am and this is what I want. No matter what you're thinking, if you're angry, you're, you're signaling, I want more anger, bring it, bring it. When you combine it with a heightened, elevated emotion, you become a magnet for that thought. So if you are really, really grateful for your new job or your new relationship before it comes, when you're already grateful, you're not lacking anything. It's signature is basically you already have it. You're grateful for it. That means something happened already. When you can get into that state ahead of the event, you will literally become a magnet and draw that to you. So this exercise is going to help you get really clear on what you're thinking already, what you're feeling, and get clear on what you want instead, and then how to bring it to you. So step one is what do I want to change? And I included, it's a life coaching tool, it's very basic, and it has eight different areas on it that are um, physical environment, business and career, finances. I can't read this. I'm, I'm 52 years old. Health, family and friends, romance, personal growth, fun and recreation. I like to separate some of those, like friends and family, for example, but that's me. And then... 
basically you're going to rate each area from one to 10 if you want to take time to do that. At this point, what I'm going to ask you to do is just look at each one and say, gosh, which one would make the biggest difference in my life? Which one do I think I would score the lowest in? From If one is very little and 10 is the highest, you could be like the most fulfilled and enlightened in each area. So just pick one. And then you're going to write down the very first three thoughts or beliefs that pop up into your mind related to that area without censoring them. So go ahead and do that. And when you're finished, just type done in the chat so I know. Okay, so everyone should have the PowerPoint. Uh, Frederick just responded to say health is what he wants to work on. Okay. All right. And then after you pick, pick your area, write down, go to step two. And what are the thoughts, the first three thoughts or beliefs that pop into your mind in that area? And don't censor them. Leslie has commented to say personal growth. So then just go to step two, which is what are the three thoughts or beliefs that the first three that come up and do your best not to censor. Seriously, just like write them down. No one's going to see this. Just you. All right. Step three, I'm just going to move on for time's sake, is emotions. What are the correlating emotions for each of the thoughts or beliefs that you listed? So, for example, when I think it says on the sheet, I will never get a new job, I feel hopeless. So when I think this or when I believe this, I feel this. Now, I, I wrote at the bottom, this is supposed to feel uncomfortable. This is the stuff that we numb out, that we run from. But if you want anything to change, we get to look at it just for a minute, not for too long. We won't sit in it. So let me know when you're finished that. All right, I'm going to move on. Step four is choosing three different higher vibrational thoughts. And they don't have to be, I think everyone knows about affirmations and the reason that they usually don't work is because we cannot get our conscious or our subconscious mind to actually believe that they're true and we can't feel good about it. So if they feel like a lie to us. We can't elevate our emotion enough to draw it to us. So what I usually do is I'll have somebody do a bridge statement. So Here's where I am. So right now I'm unemployed and making no money. Where I want to go is I want to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company making a million dollars a year. What's in between these two places that I could say, you know, as a bridge statement? So an example is I am in the process of acquiring the skills and knowledge and experience to become the CEO of a Fortune 500 company if that makes sense. It's something you're like, well, yeah, that's possible, right? So you want it to be possible. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to have to explain it right now, I think, because we're going to run out of time. The step five is feeling the emotions you will feel when you believe that those, are, those statements are realized. And this is where your imagination is going to come in. It's going to take determination. It's going to take will. It's going to take consistency. It is going to take practice. How long does it take to start a new habit or to have a new ingrained pattern in the brain? Usually 21 to 28 days. So if you want this, if you want something different, I'm going to ask you later to repeat this process every oh, good part, not the bad part. <laughs> so steps four and five. So when I am the CEO of this Fortune 500 company, I'm going to feel self-actualize. I'm going to be proud of myself and love myself. And then if you want to go a little further, how can you love yourself now? How can you feel self-actualized now? 
because that's the key is feeling it right now in the moment because you have all of this you have access to everything already it's already a possibility and it is already within you it's not an if and when i get there it's it's now step six is to practice thinking the thoughts from step four and feeling the feelings from step five every single day and here's what i'm going to ask you to do I'm gonna invite you to write them down and let them be the first thing that you see every single morning. Before you pick up your phone and read the news and go back to that have kept you where you are, create some new ones. So have it on a card or something. It's the first thing you look at every single morning and every single night before you go to sleep, read it. Take the time to feel it. That's the big part. It's a big missing part. If anyone saw the movie The Secret, the missing part of that was the elevated emotion. So you get to feel that stuff in order to make changes. If you want extra credit, you can do this for every single area that was not a nine or a 10 on that handout. And you can even add pictures. Some people do vision boards, things like that, that represent you living your new future. Have fun with it. You saw me before this started, right? I was having fun and, you know, I'm about to do a presentation in front of who knows how many people. But you know what? I'm here to serve and I'm here to have fun. It's not about me at all, which is one of the reasons I don't get nervous when I speak most of the time. <laughs> and then remember, this is a practice, not a perfect which, um, oddly enough, is what lawyers and doctors call their businesses. Kind of scary. <laughs> so in order to make sustainable changes in your life, first you get to decide what you want. What do you want? And then who do you want to be in the process? Whoever that is, choose that now. Like, what are some activities where I could be courageous, for example. Do it, step in, do some public speaking. That takes courage. <laughs> well, it's fun too. List what and who will try to stop you and how that would most likely show up in your life. Uh, these are good to know. It's like, okay, this is what I'm gonna watch out for. So by becoming conscious of these, you're telling your subconscious mind, okay, Watch out for this stuff because it might come up. And if it does, we're going to be ready this time. We're not going to let it take a step. The third thing is to develop an action plan in advance. You pretty much already know that that stuff's going to happen. Like your thoughts are going to come up. You know what they are now. They're going to sabotage you or people in your life. I and mean, it could be a child. It could be your partner that want you the same so that they don't have to get uncomfortable. What are you going to do when that happens? What's your plan? So develop a plan. Number four is to review step six of the handout every single morning and every single evening. Number five, be consistent. And if you're not, do not beat yourself up. That will not help. Develop a practice of self-compassion. The way that many of us grew up talking to ourselves was so harsh. You never speak to another human being like that. And yet that's what's going on in here. Catch yourself in the act. Stop your thoughts like you would an ex's Facebook feed. It's that important. It's vital that you know what's going on in here. It's the only way to change anything. And six and most important, have fun. Have fun, like lighten up. Life is not meant to be taken seriously all the time, Jeez. No. If you want extra credit, get an accountability partner. It really, really helps because most of us will forget. And speaking of forgetting, if you are likely to do that, do me a favor and make a choice right now. Do I think this is worth it? Do I think this has any value for me? Or am I happy being the same? So if the answer is yes, I'm going to invite you to set an alarm in your phone 
or a reminder that goes off every single day to remind you to invest time in yourself. Does anybody have any questions before I wrap up? Uh, no questions at the moment. Jan also commented to say personal growth. I don't know if I got hers out. Um, um, currently no questions. So I'll let you know if they come in. Okay. So hopefully this exercise was really helpful for you and the story structure. I hope that you got something out of this. If you did, please type yes in the chat. I would love to have your feedback. If you want more, I'm happy to connect with you on a different level. All right, I'm seeing something. Okay, good. Yes. So we have Leslie, yes, Jim, yes, yes. Jan, yes, yes, yes from me. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any. Uh, you guys left. I want to thank you for attention and for staying with me because I know some of these concepts are out there. They seem out there, but they're so important and so vital. It's, I can't tell you, your future depends on it, on you being clear with what you will no longer tolerate in your thoughts. When they, catch, when they come up, you catch them immediately and you're like, no, no. And you choose something else. You get to choose again. You're not stuck there ever. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be with you guys. And I appreciate your attention and the investment of time that you put into yourselves. And I'm gonna encourage you as you go forth, don't forget this, review these notes tonight. As soon as you finish this workshop, review these notes. If you didn't put the alarms on your phone, please do so. Choose who you wanna be. Because I promise you there's nobody alive that has your unique set of gifts and talents anywhere on the planet. And if you have a dream inside, it has been put there so that you can be it, do it, and have it. And the world is counting on you to be it, do it, and have it. So go out. Take, take this challenge. Promise yourself right now you're going to do something with it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Karen, that was a really great presentation. Really enjoyed this. Um, if anybody has any other questions, we've got a couple more minutes. Jim saying thank you. Frederick saying thank you. Um, Holland, Holland is saying great session. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. So everyone's really appreciative of your time today. Karen did a wonderful job. And yeah. I love how you just flowed even when technology failed. <laughs> You, you know, you just got to hope. That's how life is. That's the thing about speaking, too. If you guys are speakers, you know that this stuff can happen. And if I were, if I was so focused on that, that would be me focusing on myself and not focusing on you, the audience, and giving to you. I am here as a speaker to give to you, to pour into you, to inspire you to do something, right? to think differently, to take different actions so that you can show up in the world and create like a ripple effect of positivity, of love, whatever your talents are. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely, I don't know. That's why I even asked in the beginning, what is your Even though I had 50 minutes prepared, I can also pivot. I'm not tied to that. I love it. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, thank, you, thank you, everybody, for being here.